am the proud mama of two children, outstanding human beings who give meaning to my world. My daughter, Mia, and my son, Kai. My son, Kai, is a 19-year-old black man making his way in America. And his future, and that of so many other black boys and men, depends on our ability to make a difference. I'm sure all who are gathered here today have seen the video. The eight minutes and 46 seconds that George Floyd pleads for his life. Letting his arresting officers know that he can't breathe, calling for his mother. I'm sure you've seen it. And if you are a mother, or any of us really, any, any human being, when you heard that cry, you felt called, called to action, called to change. But let me tell you about being a mother. Let me tell you what we heard. There is heavy magic that happens in the moment one becomes a mother, whether made a mother by giving birth, direct acceptance of responsibility for a child, or through general maternal concern. Once a woman becomes a mother, she becomes every mother. She becomes every mother and something equally powerful happens the moment that Mr. Floyd cried out for his mama in the last minutes of his last breaths. He became every child, every black boy, every black man crying out to every mother. Every black boy and every black man who moves through this world with as much apprehension of the unimaginable as anticipation of what's possible. Every boy and every man whose heart holds as much fear as hope every day, as much disappointment as determination because the color of his skin makes his future uncertain. Every black boy and every black man. And at some point, in that tragic interaction, Mr. Floyd realized that that day was his day to become the next name on a list too long to bear. He understood at some point before he passed into eternal rest that he was the next to live the fear faced by every black man and every black boy and every black mother, every black father, sister, and brother in America. But our world woke up in that moment as well and decided that change must come. People spilled into the streets in protest, demanding justice for George. No corner of this country exempt from the consequences of a system that only fully serves some. And no thank God our world woke up, including here in St. Pete. Since Saturday, we've had protests every day and every night. And while there have been tension-filled moments, peace has prevailed in keeping with the values of our city. And wide awake, we stand here today in solidarity with our community that has made clear its expectations for the sacred trust that must be maintained between police officers and those they swear to protect and serve. We stand here to say we walk with the wounded of body, mind, and spirit. We march with the marginalized and lift their message to the highest levels of government. We persist with the protesters and provide for their safety and peace. And every cry, every chant, every call carries our collective insistence on justice swiftly along that arc of the moral universe that Dr. King talked about so long ago. And just as he promised, we are bending it toward justice. But St. Pete, we must be clear, clear about what justice looks like clear about what waits at the end of the arc, clear about our commitment to everyone who calls our community home. What is the difference that waits at the end of our demonstration? As this community protest shifts consciousness, what will be the policies and protocols that shift practices? In St. Pete, through partnership with all of the people who stand here on these steps and in this crowd, and so many more, through the work and words of everyone who cares, we plan to collaborate and craft answers to those questions, real answers, that serve our community with sustainable 
transformative change that makes the world safe for my black son and black men everywhere. In St. Pete, we lead. We set standards. We blaze trails and we break molds. And I fully believe that we will do the same with this moment. We are proud of our police officers and the strides that they have made to build relationships and trust with our community. We are proud that we are on the cusp of a new, most welcoming world that works for all of us. But we know there is much work still to be done and it will take the work of all of us. So now please help me welcome our mayor, Rick Kreisman, and he will share more about our path to progress and our promises to our community. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and thank you, Reverend Pulley. Thank you to each of you for being here today. Thank you again to the members of my team who are here. I am blessed with an outstanding team and to be mayor of an outstanding city, the best city in America. It was the summer of 1967. I was five years old and living in Detroit not the suburbs of Detroit, in Detroit, eight mile room. Like so many families that summer, my sister, my parents and I sat in front of the television to watch the nightly news. Today, 53 years later, I still remember what I saw on the news in July of that summer. The city of Detroit was burning. I remember asking my parents, why the buildings were on fire and being told that there were riots in the downtown area of the city. And as I grew older, I learned why there were riots in Detroit in 1967 and again in 1968. 1968 was in response to the assassination of Dr. King. But 1967 was about racism, police brutality, segregation, poverty, and housing. And the riots didn't just happen in Detroit, they happened across America in city after city. St. Pete endured its own challenges during that time. As I grew up, remembering that long hot summer of 1967, I had thought naively that such wide scale unrest was a thing of the past. That despite the persistent racism, injustice, and countless inequities that could be found in any city in America, we would never again see such collective anger across our, count, our country. But more than 50 years later, here we are. And not just because George Floyd was killed. We find ourselves here for too many reasons. Too many African American men have been senselessly murdered. Too many African Americans find themselves in jail for lesser reasons and longer sentences than white people. Too many policies, economic and otherwise, benefit the wealthy, the white, and the few. Too many politicians are preventing returning citizens, many of whom are black, from voting, despite the will of the people of Florida. And from working. And, from job. and for the first time in our nation's history, we don't have a president that we can turn to for leadership. The work of building just and fair societies, of ensuring opportunity for all, of leading people through hurricanes, global pandemics, and civil unrest has fallen to governors, mayors, city council members, and community leaders. But fortunately, we're up to the challenge. I believe we've proven that here in St. Pete, that we have so much work left to do. There is no doubt about that. I heard it yesterday when talking to the protesters, but I am convinced that what we learned from 1996, what we've built in this city, what we've implemented since 2014, how we reshaped this police department has helped us so far to avoid what so many other cities are facing this week. Our vision statement says, we will be a city of opportunity where the sun shines on all who come to live, work, and play. 
The very foundation of that vision is our urban affairs agenda. Enriching the lives of residents through investment in people, places, and programs. We've done that. We've made the investments and we're already seeing it pay dividends. We know that focusing on our youth is time and money well spent. We've adopted President Obama's My Brother's Keepers initiative and turned it into My Brother's and Sister's Keeper, made it our own. And we are now changing lives through our cohort of champions, men in the making, our summer workforce academies, our youth development grants, and our Not My Son campaign that keeps guns out of the hands of our kids. It's working, all of it. As poverty and crime have fallen, hopes and dreams have risen. And while I believe the trajectory of this city and every corner of our city remains upward, I know the dream still feels out of reach for far too many. I know the treatment of African Americans in this country causes pain for too many in our community. That pain leads to anger. I get it. I may never feel the pain of a knee on my neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds, but as the mayor, as a human being, I feel the pain my community feels. And it feels awful. We have in St. Pete the very best police officers in the country. I believe that. This is a department that doesn't police the community. They build relationships within the community. This is a department that has gone from high-speed chases to high-fiving kids on the basketball court. They're the best. And for most of the last four days and nights, we've also had some of the very best protesters in the country. Peaceful protesters with an important message, a plea for justice. But we've also had those who have failed to convey a clear message, who have chosen not to lift their voices, but lift bottles, rocks, and fireworks. They're doing it the wrong way. And they leave us no choice but to take action in order to maintain peace in our beautiful city. There is a better way. And St. Pete has an opportunity here to lead the way and to continue to show the world how it's done. And there is no one who knows and loves St. Pete more than our next speaker, my friend, our former governor, Congressman Charlie Chris. Thank you, Mayor. Thank all of you for being here. I want to, uh, I want to start by thanking God. I want to thank God for all of his love, his compassion, his empathy, we are all children of God. And Mayor, I am so thankful for you. I'm so grateful that you're our leader. And this city that I love as much as you is led by such a good man. You're a good man. And that's very important. <laughs> Chief Holloway. I call him St. Anthony. God bless him. We are so blessed. He deserves it. And Mayor, you know this, one of the best decisions you ever made, along with Kanika, of course. But our uh, police chief is a, is a great man. He is a, a man who understands people and cares deeply about them. And yes, he's a man of God, Reverend. And I want to thank the pastors that are here. Uh, you speak to God closer than most of us. And your leadership and guidance in times like these is so critical and so important. We appreciate and love you very much. So as the mayor said, the events that we've seen played out, not only here but across our country, have been horrific. You know, I used to be attorney general of Florida, so I know a little bit about justice. And what we're seeing now is not justice. It's an injustice, these things that are happening to our African-American brothers and sisters. And it must stop. It must stop. And I know that it will. Uh, I'm an optimist. I believe in the people behind me. I believe in the people who are supposed to deliver justice. 
And as you know, as well as I do, some in America have not delivered justice as they're supposed to do. Enough is enough. People have to do the right thing. I wear these uh, yellow bracelets every day. And it's a simple rule, but it's an important rule. That's why they call it the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. If ever there was a time for that, it is now. It is now. And the mayor's right, we're a city of good people. We are a city of light. We're the sunshine city in America, in the sunshine state of America. And the only thing that can drive out the darkness is the light. We heard it from the pastor in his prayer. Yeah, it's important. And so I'm grateful that we're all here, that we all wanna see justice done, fairness happen, equality begin again because we all deserve it. We're all children of God. Thank you so much, and let me tell you this. My friend Watson Haynes, where are you, Watson? President of the Urban League here. Uh, we were on a conference call with the pastors, uh, and Watson's one of them, and he's my brother. We went to St. Pete High together, and he's been my friend ever since. I was in his wedding, honored to have been so. But he presented on our call a 10-point plan that the Urban League has put together. And my office, as we speak, is distilling that into legislation to affect the entire country. I hope in a positive way that is led by the words that I have heard from my people here. My father was a doctor here for 55 years, Dr. Christ. I'm just, he's the first Charlie Christ. That's true. And he always taught me and my three sisters, God gave you two ears and one mouth. You respect his ratio. Listen twice as much as you talk. So thank all of you for being here. God bless every one of you. And thank God for everything we have. Amen. God bless you. And now I'd like to introduce our police chief, the man who has led our outstanding police department for nearly six years. A man who shares my commitment to providing further transparency and accountability by outfitting our officers with the right body cameras this year, Chief Tony Holloway. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. All to all our leaders, to the community, thank you for what you've done for us for the past couple of days. Well, I told Mayor I, uh, I had prepared a speech, and then after hearing all these speeches, I said I may go off script, so guess what? I'm going off script. So let's talk about the first thing. For the past three days, we've had a lot of disturbance in our city. Our people have been speaking up, and we have been listening. But the key thing is, I don't think we've been hearing them. We're gonna start hearing some people. I talked to the mayor this morning when he brought me here to the police department, we talked about community policing. And I heard some one protester said, when someone was talking bad about the police department, she yelled out, that's not the St. Pete way. So I agree with her on that. They've been coming to the police department, our home, to bring up their issues. So what I'm telling people today is, come to our home. Come to our porch. I want to listen. We will be there at two. By the way, we got you on live, being nasty and, and disrespectful to us. Thank you. you. Listen. I will be there at two. I will be there at four. I will be day. there at six. You see us every day, I will be there at eight. I will be there every day. No Come to my porch. At the innocent Let's talk. Without violence. You know, the deputy mayor said something very strong. I love my sisters and brothers in blue because we all do the same thing. But when four of us make a mistake, they set us back 100 years. Because now we all have to live off of what those four people have done. Because they killed a man. And these leaders- Your officers 
have to start all over again building a community that we're going to build together. But what I can tell you is this. There are going to be some naysayers out there. And we don't mind those naysayers. But what I can tell you is we're going to build this house again. Four guys broke this house and we're going to build this house again. You know, when a lot of people look at me, they see this uniform. And I'm the guy that gets a chance to look at both sides of the issue. I see this blue uniform, and I see what these men and women do. But when I take off this uniform, my life hasn't changed. I'm still an African-American male. Because I know what it feels like when I'm out of this uniform and somebody looks at me in a different way. Good. What I also see is when I'm not in the Tampa Bay area, I can be stopped like Mr. Floyd. You know, I let people like that get to me and I'm not. If you're black, the first thing they ask on the phone is, what does that suspect look like? Because they're going to come to you, and they're going to come save you. You know, when people call me on the phone, they say, what was that suspect? Or who's the victim? We don't ask those questions. We ask, who's the suspect there? Because that's who we want. So what I want to tell you is this. Come to our porch. The mayor is going to be there. The deputy mayor is going to be there. Come sit on our porch. Let's talk about this issue. Let me rephrase that. Let's stop talking about these issues and let's do something about these issues. Finally, I want you all to hear from my friend, a community leader, someone who knows where we've been and where we're going. My friend Matt Bird. I hear you, sister. I hear you. I hear you, brother. Thank you, I hear you. Thank I you, hear Matt. you. Thank you, Matt. We're standing here, folks, because everybody hear us. Everybody hear us. It's important right now. I brought a whole book up here because I don't want to miss one word. Listen, sis, I love you, sis. I understand those emotions, sis. Almost 25 years ago, I was... 25 years ago, right here in St. Petersburg, Tyron Lewis was shot by the police. And I was, I was out there. I was feeling just like she's feeling right now. I was out there yelling at the top of my lung. I was protesting. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know about policies. I didn't know about legislation. I just knew it was wrong. I was on 9th Street and 22nd Avenue. I could feel the flames of Badcock furniture burning behind me. I felt it. I was screaming. They stuck a camera in my face. And I said, this is a moment. Address this. Address this. Just like right now. Address it. Guess what? I didn't know what to say. I didn't have the words. So when I finally got my words together, I looked into the camera and I said, we just want them to stop killing us like this. That's all. We just want them to stop killing us, man. I understand it, folks. I understand it. Listen, I'm familiar with it. 25 years later, folks, here we are again. Let me get on track, folks. I knew I was going to do this. All right. All right. Listen, folks, everyone is listening. St. Petersburg has matured as a city in many ways, and it's taken some really positive steps in the right direction. Today, I stand here proud to be part of this beautiful city. I'm proud of the diversity in this city and its leadership. 
I'm proud that they fight hard for our black men. I know how hard Nikki fight every day for our black men. I know that. I'm proud to be part of that. I'm proud that we have our first African-American police chief. I'm proud of how our city responded to the horrific death of George Floyd. I'm proud of the diverse crowds of, of genuine protesters. I'm proud of the, how the great people of the city united and stood up for the most vulnerable cities, citizens during the pandemic. I'm proud of this city. And I'm so thankful to be part of it. But guess what? Mayor Chrysler didn't call on me to come up here and talk about what we did right. Mayor Chrysler brought me up here because that vivid picture of those four police officers squeezing the life out of George Floyd made it impossible for us to ignore the realities, folks, that we all ignore for so long. All of us are guilty of ignoring it. I myself am guilty of ignoring it. Those images, they won't go away. We have to have conversations that bring about change. The emotions are real, for folks, but we need, we need actions now. We need actions. So, Today, I'm here to challenge us. I'm, I'm here to challenge this administration to engage in those uncomfortable conversations. Have those conversations. This is the time. This is the time, black folks, if it need to be said, you need to say it. This is the time, white folks, when you don't know what it is, you have a question, you need to ask it. Hello, ask somebody who knows I agree with you, brother, and I feel your pain. Listen, white supremacy slapped us in the face and gave us all a reality check. Every last one of us. I'm gonna quote Malcolm X. He said it like this, and this is how I feel about this city. I'm absolutely proud to be standing here because I know 25 years from now, even if I had all the words to put together, nobody wanted to hear it. So I'm thankful that they're listening. So, Malcolm X, if you stick a knife in my back nine inches and you pull it out six inches, that's not progress. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. It's not progress until you heal the wound. And St. Pete, we have some healing to do. We have some work to do. To all the genuine people that are out there doing the work, I salute you. I love you. Thank you. We have, in, 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 in terms of action, we have a social justice policy team being developed, and you will hear from them uh, in, a, in the next few days with, some, uh, with a list of demands. So we're taking action, folks. We're taking this energy, and we're turning it into action. I want to encourage each one of you guys from all walks of life to continue to speak. Continue to speak boldly, honestly, respectfully, precisely. And let's fight and channel all this energy into the solutions available. I want to present two common sense solutions before I leave here. I want to put it out in the air. And I'm going to say this. I've been to some fast meetings, so I'm going to ask for y'all to participate. I want y'all to raise your hand. All right? First, I want to challenge every mechanism in place for citizens to hold the police accountable. Every mechanism. I want you guys to make that process as easy as possible for us. I want you guys to make sure that people at the police department are cooperating with us. now. To the community, I love y'all. I want to challenge y'all to study what's available. Not look over it, not glance over it. I want us to study it. And I want us to make sure that it meets our needs. And if it does not meet our needs, I want us as a community to propose it to our officials. And I want you guys to listen, continue to listen. Thank you guys for having me up here. I'm almost finished, all right? Uh, it would be irresponsible for me to leave without mentioning this, okay? 75 to 90% of the people in the communities that experience over-policing and police brutality, 75 to 90% of those people don't vote. So, folks, if you wanna, if you wanna fight and find a solution, register the vote. It matters. It matters because we vote for the sheriff, we vote for the judges, the state attorney, we vote for the mayor, 
that hires the first black American, African American police chief, it matters. Every vote, every election matters. And these are the people that shape the policies. These are the people that control what matters in our lives. Every vote counts. Now, whew. so now if you register to vote, vote, folks, all right? And I'll close with this. If you still think your vote and your voice does not matter, watch George Floyd plead for his life. Speak while people are listening. God bless y'all. Thank you, Mr. As we conclude today, let me take a moment first to remind us all that we are still in the middle of a pandemic, so please continue to social distance, wear a mask, do things the St. Pete way. And lastly, I'm gonna end with a prayer in my faith. It's a prayer for peace. O se shalom be marma, huya se shalom, aleinu be'al kol Yisrael be'imru amen. May the Father who makes peace in the heavens grant peace to us all and let us say amen. amen. Thank you all. For all of America's people, especially here in our hometown. We will begin this morning in reflection. Please join us in prayer, led by Reverend Dr. Doral Pulley, Senior Pastor of Today's Church, Tampa Bay. Good morning, everyone. Let's take a moment to center ourselves in the presence of God, to remember why we're here, because someone could not breathe. So if we could take a deep, conscious cleansing breath to breathe in again to hold it 